this this next story, I wanted to tie this together. And it's the headline said, Activision is earning more money from mobile than PC and console combined. So it says because of titles like Diablo Immortal, the publisher earned more than 800 million from mobile games in Q2. Um, so more than half of their total earnings for the second quarter of 2022 came from mobile titles, not from console or PC games. So that's the out leading the way Diablo Immortal, Call of Duty Mobile, and Candy Crush Saga all uh, spinning out big dollars uh, for, that's insane. for mobile. Well, to be fair, I mean, it, is, it is insane in the context of Activision's history, but ironically, it's literally the exact percentage of the market. Like fifty one percent of the market is mobile, and that's exactly what Activision is. So, hey. I mean, I guess it makes sense as one of the bigger publishers. Maybe they it would make sense that they have a similar uh, makeup as the whole market. Like they're almost like an ETF for the whole market. Um, yeah. But notably, they are much higher than others. I think EA actually talked about this in the earnings call. They were like they were like seventeen percent now. Take Two is probably a little higher, maybe just because because they bought Zynga, but still, yeah. I doubt they're fifty percent plus. So I don't know. I, I guess it's it's surprising, but not surprising, maybe. So so obviously but on the show. We, know, oh, sorry, Paul. Go, for go it. ahead, Jimmy. No, I was just say on, on the show we put on our tinfoil hats, right? Do you guys think it's possible three years ago when this deal was first struck to create Warcraft Mobile that maybe there was some rev share component or some finance? Because again, it said financial. There's a financial reason why it fell apart. Do you think there was some rev share component or some issue? that Activision Blizzard basically said, crap, we're actually going to make a ton of money on this and we're not going to fully capitalize on that IP and opportunity because of a crappy deal that we did three years ago that Diablo Immortal is showing us what we might be losing. We would save more money in the long run by scrapping it now, starting it up again with a fresh studio uh, with with better terms. Do you think that that was maybe the reason? I just, I'm trying to piece it together. I think that actually makes a lot of sense. Because right it's almost like the opposite, the exact opposite extreme of the other. Like, there's two scenarios: they either cancel it because they're like, "Okay, we're not going to make a lot of money. Like, we, we it's not worth building. We're not going to make a lot of money. S- cancel it, scrap it." Or, "Oh my God, we're going to make so much money. Why don't we build this ourselves rather than give thirty percent of what?" Like, I think it's a, a great point. I don't know which I don't know which one it is, but I think it's a great point to acknowledge that might be the case. I will. I, that is an interesting insight. I will just say that WoW is one of the maybe the one game that I would appreciate playing from the couch on an iPad, and only because it is so much of it is just grinding quests repetitively or things like that. Like it, <laughs> I feel like it's the one game you could probably get away with having you know uh, a mobile experience that allows you to do some of these things more comfortably. Uh, but you know. Uh, it's interesting. It's interesting in, to put these two stories next to each other and go, hey, you know, we're making more money than ever from mobile, but we're also canceling maybe the most significant mobile title Activision Blizzard could possibly make, you know, with their existing IP. Related um, to one of the most popular gaming IPs in the history of gaming, right? Like taking that just one yeah. step further in context. Chris says, and this is why Nintendo was genius with the Game Boy. Accessibility and portability is key for gaming. I mean, there's definitely a segment of the market that this is very true. Um, I, just one th- other thing from this this article. It was interesting how close console and PC are still, right? Like, there's there's not there's not a huge not a huge difference in terms of the size of those businesses at Activision Blizzard. Um, but they did say they made 105 million from events and esports which I thought was interesting because I'm curious what's in that, right? Like, is it payment? Is it continuing, you know, to take in the the piecemeal payments for the franchises? Is it ad revenue? Is it like, where's that 105 million coming from? It's the smashing success of the leagues, Paul. What are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, 105 uh, million not- is not a lot. Like, it's a lot in the context of, context of we have like so low expectations. But like, think about that. Like, that's the entire. If that's the entire league revenue, I mean, it might just be the act. I don't know how they account for it. It might just be the Activision portion. But it's like that's pretty small in the context of what we talk about. You know, for esports, like multi billion dollar industry. Um. Yeah, I just you know. So, you, I so thought that's it was higher. interesting. That, 
Is that what would you have expected that revenue to be? Lower, lower. Like I guess the lower. profit might be negative, so it's like you know they're still like <laughs> they still have that YouTube deal. They're making like thirty million a yeah, year. Yeah, but that's and what like, that's the question. Up. Is that is that coming in over time? Have they already booked that revenue? Right. That that's yeah. those are the question marks that we we don't know the answer to. Um, but uh, that I find interesting at least. 